Europe's great period of discovery took place from the latter half of the 15th century through the early 17th century. Of the notable explorers of the New World, there was Christopher Columbus, Sebastian Vizcano, Vasco da Gama, Juan Ponce de Leon, and Ferdinand Magellan, among others. But little credit is given to one Gaspar de Portola, who with his crew, explored California. After a long hiatus, Spain renewed their interest when they learned of Russian interest in the Alaska fur trade and intent to settle along the coast and realize the importance the Pacific coast would have on maritime trade. In response, the Spanish government organized an expedition with express orders to locate the harbor of Monterey and establish a base at Point Reyes, otherwise known as San Francisco. The expedition under the command of the distinguished Captain Gaspar de Portola settled in the summer of 1769 and became the first inland expedition to encounter the many indigenous cultures of coastal California. Gaspar de Portola was born in 1723 at Balaguer in Catalina into a Spanish noble family. As a young man, he joined the army and quickly rose to the rank of captain in the Espana regiment. He became a commission and sign in 1734, a lieutenant in 1743, and captain in 1764, serving in Italy and Portugal, learning the skills to be an able organizer and a good leader. In 1768, he volunteered to lead an expedition being planned by Jose de Galvez, the Spanish Inspector General. It would include a combination of soldiers, settlers, and missionaries to create bases up the California coast in San Diego and Monterey. The effort and experience that Portola received in the army gave him unparalleled ability to lead the expedition. In 1769, as a reward for his services, Charles III named Portola governor of Alta California to take charge of the expulsion of the Jesuits from that territory and establish Spanish settlements. The expedition parties over land and maritime were prepared for the military occupancy of Alta California. Portola planned an ambitious four-part expedition to colonize the area between Monterey and San Diego and establish outposts along the coast. The expedition assembled in the spring of 1769 and consisted of Captain Portola, Captain Rivera with 27 cuirassiers, Lieutenant Pedro Pages and 25 Catalonian volunteers, Father Juniper Osero with a number of Christianized Native Americans, Father Juan Crespi, Miguel Consanso, and Dr. Pedro Fred. However, when the expedition reached San Diego, they lost two-thirds of their crew to scurvy and lost most of their Native Americans from desertion. The expedition swindled down to 64 people. Food became critically short and many of their men became ill. Portola immediately set out to find Monterey Bay. So, so um, General Portola's initial reaction was to, um, they came down here, they passed through it, they set up camp actually right here at this site. Um, later documented, um, his, initial, his initial reaction was actually boredom. He didn't know or realize the significance of his discovery at the time until later documented by other authorities. And looking back on it, he found that it was significant only to later find out that he did discover what is now what we also said as the San Francisco Bay. Aside from discovering what is now known as one of the, the most famous bays in all of the world, uh, Portola's expeditions actually inspired um, many different people to travel here, colonize, and to further um, inspired actually Christianity to flow through the heart of all of California along with these great peoples and uh, bodies and different lives. When they reached Point San Pedro on what is now known as the San Francisco Peninsula, Portola looked across the Gulf of the Farallones towards Point Reyes and believed that they must have missed Monterey Bay. Portola sent out his chief scout, Sergeant Jose Ortega, in an act of desperation on a three-day voyage to find a supply of food, preferably deer, in order for the camp to take refuge on Point San Pedro for the night. If a few days later, Portola stopped at Monterey Bay, but did not think it was actually Monterey. However, due to the party's overland approach, thick coastal fog, and Vizcano's inaccurate description, the group ultimately missed their final destination. The overland approach established was used by the Spanish to communicate and transport goods and became what is now known as the El Camino Real. The expedition then attempted to reach Drake San Francisco's Bay and explored and named many localities in the vicinity south of the Golden Gate. 
Portola and his party marched from Valley Cat, Lower California, to Monterey, Upper California, a distance of about 1,000 miles. Disappointed by their failure to find Monterey Bay, the party returned to San Diego. Upon the group's return to San Diego, Portola was persuaded by Captain Vicente, and they had been on the harbor and embarked on another expedition. On May 24, 1770, the expedition saw a clear day the harbor and finally found a spot after 235 years upon which to occupy Alta California. Along the way, Portola and his party encountered numerous Native American tribes and exchanged pleasantries. The Native Americans were originally suspicious of the foreigners, but gradually tolerated the foreigners. Miguel Castana wrote, The Indians in the neighborhood, warned of our coming, came out to meet us so confident it seemed and certain. Our friendship, they thought, all brought their women. Most tribes in the region were very friendly and welcomed the foreigners. The friendliness of the large native population, sheltered valley, and vast amount of resources led Portola to consider the area as the perfect site for a mission. The Native Americans were fascinated by the explorers, especially with the strings of glass beads presented by them. In return for Portola's gesture of good faith towards the Native Americans by distributed beads and clothing, the natives accompanied the expedition and scouted opened up new passages for the party to go through. What seemed complex and unfamiliar, uncharted wilderness and the explorers was known and friendly land with elaborate networks of trails of the indigenous people. As is the case of the European explorers, Portola and his crew were preceded by knowledgeable natives who followed friendly and familiar trails and landforms. The friendliness of the indigenous tribes were essential to the success and survival of the expedition. However, some tribes gave less than friendly welcomes to the explorers. Three natives were seen and friendly Indians were sent in. They succeeded in getting one who was treated as well as possible, and it was understood from him by signs that his chief had sent him to watch us and that uniting with the other villages, they were going to lie in ambush to kill the father Sarah and company. One of Portola's men, L.T. Phages, experienced unpleasant relations with the natives. Sarah converted thousands of Native Americans to Christianity and is credited for his commitment to his faith and for bringing Catholicism to California. Sarah oversaw a mission system that would rapidly transform the environment and living situation of California's Native American communities. The party of friars and soldiers brought European domesticated animals such as cows and pigs into the region, reproducing past containment. Also, the party introduced non-native species of grasses and weeds supplied from New Spain and overran the local plants upon which Native American communities depended on for food. The Spain used space to carry so many glass beads and trinkets rather than food and other crucial supplies in order to pacify the Native Americans. This shows how committed they were to creating peaceful relationships. It was important to have peaceful coexistence in the region because the long-term goal was to eventually civilize, settle, and convert the region to Christianity. Thousands of indigenous people were pushed by these colonization events to move to the new established missions in order to secure subsidence for survival. The friars forced the indigenous people to work for their missions and assimilate them into Christian culture, setting the precedent for forced labor and the dominance of religion and society. The transformation of the environment disrupted the kinship structures of the indigenous people, exchanging the traditional beliefs of the natives and replacing it with a Christian model. Mortality rates increased due to the rampant spread of diseases by the Spanish among the native population made it harder and harder for communities to replace the members that they had lost. The epidemiological and environmental transformation brought about by colonization made it difficult for communities to survive without some connection to the missions. Portola's effort to discover the Monterey and San Francisco Bay allowed Spain to establish settlements and missions repelling Russia and Britain's efforts to gain a larger control over America. Landmarks named by Portola and his party are still used today. The creation of the overland route north to San Francisco used by Portola now known as El Camino Real, was integral to the settlement of Alta California and made it possible for Uno Becerra and his friars to establish a string of missions. Sarah's mission served as the nuclei of permanent settlements and converted thousands of Native Americans to Christianity.